IBF Super Flyweight Championship of the World against Vincenzo Balcastro of Italy. Due to go 12 rounds this one, Quiroga unbeaten in 16 fights with 11 knockouts. Indeed, you might have seen him winning this title on Eurosport against the Colombian Juan Polo Perez. Quiroga, one of the youngest world champions around. He's only 21 years of age. There he is on the left of the picture. And the referee having a little language problems. He's having to speak through an interpreter here as he gives the boxers their final instructions. The ropes are very tight. Do not use them to propel yourself against your opponent. Touch gloves. Well, it's a long, laborious technique. Having to speak to a boxer from the States and a boxer from Italy. I guess Quiroga could understand reasonably well. He comes from San Antonio, Texas. But you're looking at Bel Castro, the challenger. This is his second world title attempt. The former undefeated European bantamweight champion now moving down three pounds. And Quiroga, well, he looks a bit of a mean machine, doesn't he? Away they go then. 12 rounds for the IBF Super Flyweight Championship at eight stone, three pounds. That's uh, just a little up from the conventional flyweight. And there's a color check for you. Kiroga, the champion in the white trunks. Kiroga's a little buzzsaw of a fighter, all action, pressure type of fighter. And Belcastro has the reputation anyway of being a little bit defensive and awkward, but he's very cagey and uh, often finds a way to victory as his European title opponents found out. Pel Castro is five feet four inches tall, they're in the blue trunks, so a slight reach advantage for him. A couple of inches taller than Quiroga, will be looking to try to get inside all the time. Pel Castro finding it difficult just to get his timing right in this opening minute or so. And he's in reverse gear most of the time in this round as we would have expected looking to score more on the counter and he got in there with a nice little left to the body in that exchange made Kiroga miss as well Kiroga has the nickname Pickin after the hottest chili pepper to be found in the San Antonio region apparently He's quite a hot little boxer as well. I guess that's how they uh, gave him the nickname. The world champion in only his 14th fight was Kiroga. And when you think how long the likes of Archie Moore had to wait for their titles in the olden days, it's a bit of a revelation, but so many world titles around, of course, these days, four versions at every weight. Kiroga's timing's been out in this opening round. Well, Castro keeping nice and mobile and scoring there with a couple of good headshots. He's hit an awful lot of thin air, Kiroga, in this opening round. Hasn't got into his rhythm at all yet. And again, on the way in, getting caught by the Italian. Fair opening round this for Belcastro. KG customer, he's 29 years of age, eight years older than the champion. It's again good work from Belcastro. And those are good defensive skills. Going backwards, getting out of range, making Kiroga miss again, and then catching him with a left of the body. Bell to end, a pretty fair opening round for the challenger. Well, just makes you wonder, is this going to be one of those fights where the form book will be upset because Caroga was a hot favorite, but Belcastro, as he goes back to the corner there, will be well pleased with that opening round. A check on his uh, fight statistics so far. 20 wins, only three knockouts. He's obviously a comparatively light hitter. Four defeats and three draws. That's a bit unusual. Here's some action from that opening round, and Belcastro putting together that pretty good combination. 
and he might just have done enough to have taken that opening round on the scorecards. Round two. IBF title on the line here at Super Flyweight. Well, Karoga's having to go hunting his man. He's having to make the fight, but Balcastro in that opening round did well in reverse gear and scored well effectively on the counter. Karoga in the white shorts, just to remind you. This time it's Balcastro who's made to miss by a mile. In Belcastro's previous attempt to win a world title, he fought the IBF super bantamweight champion at that time, Jose Sinatra, in 1988, and was outpointed. So he'll be hoping he does better second time around. But there's no doubt about it, Kuroga's having a bit of problems trying to work out his style. Again, Kiroga missing. Kiroga finding that his punches are being slipped. Interesting clash of styles here, which could make for a pretty good fight as this warms up even more. Bel Castro getting in with some good jabs, two, three of them, and again. Kuroga's had a few problems here, trying to get in range to land his shots. As he's come forward, Belcastro has quite cleverly gone into reverse gear and thrown out his jab on the counter. to fight this kind of fight, Belcastro is going to have to be plenty well conditioned because he's uh, using the ring a lot, dancing around. His legs will have to last those 12 rounds. Could be that Kuroga may wear him down and catch him up and find it easier to find that target. He's found it pretty difficult in this first two rounds. Good start from Belcastro. End of two rounds. Lots of pressure from Kiroga, but in truth, not too many success stories for him in terms of heavy punches landed. It was a more even sort of round. I thought Belcastro did enough to take the first. And there you saw Kiroga just slip a little bit from that right. There you go. Referee intervening. No count administered. <laughs> Round three for this IBF World Super Flyweight Championship. Challenger Balcastro in the blue trunks, champion Kiroga in white. Kiroga turned professional as a 17-year-old, a rather chubby featherweight he was in those days at nine stone. He's come down 11 pounds from that. A bit unusual. Fighters usually go up the weights as they get older. But maybe he wasn't in such good condition then. Kuroga, who won this title against Juan Polo Perez in Sunderland, England. Bit of an odd venue for a fight like that. No British boxers involved, but I think it was about the only place that Cedric Kushner, the promoter, could find to put it on. Wasn't a bad fight either. Again, Bal Castro thumping out that jab to some effect, but missing hopelessly there with the right. British boxing fans may remember that Bal Castro twice fought uh, the British bantamweight champion, Billy Hardy. 
hotly disputed decisions they were too. Belcastro holding on to the title, Hardy convinced that he'd won, and then they had a second fight which ended in a draw. Belcastro getting the benefit of the doubt on those occasions and holding on to his European title. He's since been stripped of it in rather mysterious circumstances. Nobody quite seems to know why. Here he is in world title contention anyway. That's good right back from Belcastro. And I think he's surprising Kiroga here. He's landed with some good head punches and Kiroga is forced to take his first steps backwards. Well, Belcastro here is shocking the champion by standing and trading with him. Belcastro's performance so far has been a bit of a revelation. He's been the sharper worker of these two. He's landing with more shots. Maybe they're not the heavier shots. But he really does look sharp and motivated for this, as you'd expect him to be. There we are. More combinations to the head from Vincenzo Belcastro. This is quite a performance from him. And Caroga again, has to stay, step backwards. He's caught by two right crosses and a left hook as well. What a round this is for the challenger. And if Belcastro was a bigger hitter, Caroga could be in very, very deep water indeed here. Last few seconds of the round. And a big, big round for the challenger. Well, Belcastro getting on top in that third round. Are we going to get a turn up here? Join us again. In Pen and paper ready to order the following product by phone. Can you survive the all-smashing, all-crashing Car Wars 3? Thrills and spills, incidents and accidents, near misses and miraculous escapes, all from top professional motorsports. Cars, bikes, boats, so spectacular you can almost smell the burning rubber. Witness the drivers dicing with death before your very eyes. Amazingly, no one gets seriously injured. Fasten your seatbelt for the hottest show on wheels. It's Car Wars 3. Plus, Stunt Mania, an exciting insight into the world of the Daredevil Stunt Rider. Watch with horror, amazement and anticipation as the drivers perform the craziest, wildest stunts imaginable. Cars falling like skittles, cars flying through the air. The most spectacular, death-defying car and truck stunts you'll ever see. Have you got the nerve to watch Stunt Mania? Order this brilliant double VHS video pack by phone now. Car Wars 3 and Stunt Mania come with a full money-back guarantee. Order Car Wars 3, the greatest ever Car Wars video and Stunt Mania by phone now. Yes, the Royal Rumble is coming soon to Eurosports. This extraordinarily explosive spectacular features the immortal Hulk Hogan. Macho King Randy Savage, the Legion of Doom, Mr. Perfect, Texas Tornado, and Jake the Snake Roberts. It's every man for himself. Get thrown out of the ring and you're out of the competition. No partners, only opponents. A right Royal Rumble, Friday, March 1st, on Eurosports. Fourth round coming up for this IBF Super Flyweight Championship here in Capo Orlando, Italy, with Robert Caroga in a little bit of early trouble against Vincenzo Belcastro, the challenger from Italy in the blue trunks. Belcastro had a big, big third round. Every time he gets in range, Caroga, he's getting picked off by a very busy challenger. This is an inspired performance so far from Belcastro. He looks as if he really is starting to believe himself in there. A little bit tentative in that opening round, did quite well in it. 
but was mostly in reverse gear. But it looks as if he's taken some of Kiroga's best shots and he's decided mentally that this champion isn't going to hurt him too much. Whether he's right about that, we'll find out as it goes on. But he's coming forward more and more and picking Kiroga off and the champion looks bemused and bewildered at times. This is not the fight he expected. On my scorecard, I have Bel Castro ahead in this fight at the moment. Well, the Italian using his experience, his ring craft, his know-how, gleaned over seven years as a pro, and Caroga is still relatively inexperienced, although he is a world champion. Still only 21, remember. Fascinating tactically, this. As the fight strategies everybody expected in this one are kind of being reversed. And you sense the crowd getting more and more animated there at ringside. Bel Castro probably realizing that at 29 years of age, this may well be his last chance to break into the big time and the big money at world title level. He's had his successes, of course, at European title level. But uh, he's getting pretty old for a fighter at one of the lighter weights. Just missing with uh, a few there, Bel Castro. But he hasn't missed with very many. Very, very busy indeed. He's outworking Kiroga more than anything else. And then a left hook right at the end of the round as well. And again, a good fourth round for the challenger. And I've given him three of the four rounds so far. Kiroga there looking for the uppercut inside. Belcastro missing with two, three hooks. Four, five, none of those landed, actually. That wasn't really the best action of that round. And then that left from Kiroga there, just catching a glancing blow as they go on into the fifth now. Fascinating little fight here in the eight stone, three pounds division. There are some other fair boxers in this division as well, like Kaosai Galaxy, the WBA champion, and Sun Kill Moon, the WBC champ. One of those in-between divisions, as it were, not one of the classical divisions, super flyweight, but uh, it's a pretty good one at the moment. Again, most of the work coming from Bel Castro. Can he keep up this pace and this level of inspiration? Kiroga's got a much better knockout record. He is a heavier puncher, not much doubt about that. But it's a factor that so far he hasn't really been able to bring into play. He might as it wears on. Now, that's a little bit wild from Bel Castro. That isn't so sharp from him. He was picking his punches a lot better than that earlier on. And he must have thrown about six or seven there that just hit thin air. They can tire you. They can leave you a bit arm weary if you're not careful. But he looks to have come out here in the condition of his life, this challenger. Now, rising again as Bel Castro lands with the many, many punches he's throwing. Two or three of them found their head anyway there. A few more missed. That's where Caroga wants to get Bel Castro, close in on the ropes and then thump away. Wants to get inside Caroga, I think. Hasn't been allowed to do that every time he looks for a way in. Bel Castro's leading off first, not letting Caroga get set. 
excellent tactical fight this from the 29 year old Italian challenger you see Caroga's now thinking lining up an assault does land with one to the body but Belcastro is just throwing out so much leather all the time that Caroga is hardly having time to think and set up his assaults it's keeping him off balance all the time but can he keep up this work rate Belcastro again thumping out the jab there Yes, that's good work again from him. One or two of those missed. But two or three did find the head. And again, on my scorecard, I give the round to Balcastro. The Italian, really very, very busy. Here comes Caroga back again, looking to throw the right over the top. Not a lot in Belcastro's punches, perhaps. He does have this... Well, it's poor, really, his knockout record. Only three knockouts in 20 wins always usually has to do it the hard way though there was uh, a notable occasion uh, when Belcastro in the blue trunks there knocked out Fabrice Benichou in the third round in a shock European title win and Benichou after that went on to become the IBF champion but it uh, has to be said that uh, knockout win was rather out of context with most other things that have happened in Belcastro's career This is uh, Kiroga's second defense, by the way. After winning against Perez in his first, he won in four rounds against the South African who goes under the name of Boyani Wonderboy Nene. Nene wasn't too much of a Wonderboy that night. Kiroga covered up well there, to be fair to him. Got his gloves up and made Belcastro a miss a fair bit. Hard for the judges here to score because a lot of the punches are missing. Belcastro's throwing out a lot of punches. Quite a few are hitting the air, as are Kiroga's, to be honest. But, see, that one missed as well. And it's, of course, only the punches that land on the target area that should be counted. quite hard for the judges particularly when the fighters have got their back to you as it were hard to see if a punch landed or was simply landed on the gloves or elbows this is sometimes why you get these huge disparities in the scoring but what a fine performance this is so far from Belcastro He's been the beneficiary in the past of some somewhat uh, debatable decisions. But here, he's looking to try and make no mistake at all. He's outworked Kiroga in the first half of this fight. Last few seconds coming up then of round six. And Belcastro shows no sign so far of easing up. Really odd, really. Kiroga the one with the reputation as the pressure fighter, but Belcastro has been putting the pressure on him. So the halfway point in the fight, and what a turn up it is so far. Is it going to continue this way? We'll find out.
do it, do it, do it. Do it, get to it, with Nike, it's the move. Smooth in the groove, on top, striving to prove. Nike's thrilling bizarre. I don't care who you are. Sport Nike, that's right, and be hype like a star. Don't drop it, knock it, you can't stop it. Yeah. Headed for the top of the market, just like a rocket. The shoes of other names, insane, won't sustain. With Nike, Air Power will still remain. Just do it. <laughs> Find time for primetime wrestling, Friday night at 10.30, 9.30 UK on Eurosport. Every Monday night on Superbouts, we look back at one of the outstanding fights of yesteryear. Alan Minter, British middleweight champion, defends his title against Chris Finnegan in our next Superbout. They fought each other on three unforgettable occasions in the 70s. All three went the distance, all three were great fights. Minter meets Finnegan, Monday night at 9, 8 UK on Eurosport, the station that packs the biggest punch. Welcome back to Capo Orlando. There's Vincenzo Belcastro challenging for this IBF Super Flyweight title against Robert Quiroga. And, well, on my scorecard at the moment, I have Belcastro leading quite handily at the halfway point. Questions are whether he can keep up this pressure. He looked to have put a little bit of, uh, quite a lot of grease, in fact, around the left eye of Belcastro. I don't know if they're worried about a little nick that might be just appearing there. Kiroga must have been shocked, really, to find the way that Belcastro has fought him. I think Kiroga expected to be doing most of the pressure, most of the attacking. But there he is. He can't quite set himself. Caught by the right cross by Belcastro again there. I think it's fair to say that if Belcastro had been a big hitter or a heavier puncher, Kiroga might be in... A considerably worse state by now. He's taken quite a lot to the head. Left again from Belcastro. And again, that left hook. There is a little bit of an angry look at under the left eye as well of Belcastro. Hint of redness there. Have to watch that doesn't swell up and close the eye. Doesn't look too bad at the moment. Kiroga getting in there with his own left. Now Kiroga getting in closer. That's where he wants to be. Get on top of Belcastro, as it were, as they say in the trade. Time he does land with the left. Of Karoga's 16 wins, 11 have come by knockout or stoppage, which suggests fair punch power. On the left to the body, then Karoga scoring with the jab. He's doing slightly better in this round, the champion. And Working a little bit more steadily, getting in closer, staying on top of Belcastro and starting to score a little bit more regularly. Uppercut inside as well, but back comes Belcastro with a couple of hooks of his own. Maybe not too much in the punches. Caroga coming back with his jab and then one to the body as well. Stalking Belcastro. The corner will have told him, I think, he's got to get in closer. All the time he's on the outside, Caroga, it didn't work too well for him because Belcastro was getting off with his punches first. Good jab as well there from Quiroga, the 21-year-old from San Antonio, Texas. And if Quiroga thought this was going to be an easy defense, he now knows a lot different. That's a good body shot from Kiroga. Left hook to the body, and that was one of Kiroga's better rounds. I'll have given him that one, the seventh. And uh, Kiroga does rather need to make some inroads into 
what, well, this commentator anyway perceives to be a points deficit at this stage. There's his record, as I was telling you, 16 unbeaten fights, but that record in some danger at the moment. There's the Bal Castro corner. A bit worried about that left eye. They're working away at it. There's no bad cut or anything, but it all looks a bit angry around that left eye. Have to be careful. There is a hint of a nick there by the side of the eye as well of Bal Castro. You can probably see it in that exchange. Still coming forward. Not a lot in his punches, in truth, there, uh, Vincenzo Bal Castro. Gumshield back in. Looking a bit more tired now, breathing a little more heavily. Some of the judges and uh, my fellow commentators at work at ringside. Three judges, by the way, uh, including Dave Paris from Great Britain. We have a German, Arthur Ellenson, and Jim Taylor from the United States. Referee doesn't score. Now, can Kiroga build on that fairly good seventh round that he had took those punches on the gloves from Belcastro and uh, Belcastro just looking a bit wild now not picking his shot so well that's a good left from Kiroga this time then one to the body from Kiroga so maybe just a start of a turn of the tide all the best fights have moods and twists and turns. And maybe we're witnessing one around this stage in this one. Caroga making Bel Castro miss a bit more now. Composing himself. Again, Bel Castro misses, misses again. body shot from Caroga. Now Castro does get in with a right that time. And Caroga's playing this a little more smartly now. He's not getting picked off with so much. He's paying more attention to his defense. He's slipping a bit more, waiting his opportunities, making Bel Castro miss a bit and getting in there with the left hook. You see he made Bel Castro miss twice there. This is a, a fight the judges will need to watch while they need to watch them all very, very closely, but you really do have to discern about what is missing and what is finding the target area. Tough to score. That left does score from Caroga, and the left from Belcastro doesn't hit the glove. Belcastro gets in with the jab to the head that time. composed work, more poise now about Kiroga. He knows he has a serious challenge on his hand, and he knows he needs to claw back some points, I think. That's good left hook from him. He's making Bal Castro miss a lot, but that one didn't. The right left hook from Kiroga. Better boxing in this round from the 21-year-old champ. As the bell goes to end it, and again, I'd have given that round to uh, Kiroga, though it was indeed hard to score. Bel Castro throwing out so much leather, but uh, I think not much of it finding its target in that round. Maybe this little exchange will give us an illustration of that. Indeed, it does. Let's score with that right in that little exchange, does Bel Castro. And Kiroga made to miss with his attempted left hook. But a very interesting fight indeed. Some people thought this might be a bit of a formality for Kiroga against Bal Castro, who has um, a little bit of an in and out record. His last two fights, Bal Castro, had been against a couple of uh, Argentine journeymen, proved very little. He won them on points. Now that's better from Bal Castro at the start of this round, working with his jab, getting on the move a bit more again. He can keep on the move. If he's got it in his leg still, he can keep the fight at range and keep Kiroga away from him, which is what he needs to do. Worked well for him in the first half of the fight. Well, 
Well, the referee unhappy there. Bel Castro seemed to land a punch around the back of the neck of Kiroga. Uh, Crowd give a few whistles, not too happy. They're right on the side of this Italian. great condition for this Bel Castro obviously he really has worked so very very hard no question at all about his motivation and commitment he wants this title and he wants it badly oh it's a good left hook from Caroga best shot of the round and the right uppercut inside as well and then the jab from Caroga no punch economy about him, certainly, at this stage of the fight. He's not throwing out so many punches as Bal Castro, but I think he might be scoring with more, like that one. This is fair ring craft, really, from Caroga. He got caught with a left there. No, from Bal Castro. When you get to this stage of the fight, really, you can throw the form book out the window a bit. They've been in there now for eight and a half rounds or so, and it really does come down to who wants it the most. This is where they're really starting to dig deep. And it's a pretty lonely place to be, as you've heard one or two times before, I'm sure, from commentators. the last few seconds and of the ninth round and this fight has been a good one and it's boiling up towards its climax nine rounds gone three to go join us for the climax of the fight in just a moment or two when this was a number one hit. In the year 25, 25. And where were you when everyone danced to this? Hey, hey, oh, someday, someday. And here's one that will really take you back. Now, Teledisc presents Our Generation. 50 all original hits in one extra special collection. Our Generation, with all those fabulous fun hits. Our Generation, with the really classic hits. And the Great Ballads. The Animals, uh, Jerry and the Pacemakers, so fairy, cross the, the Walker Brothers, the Beach Boys, the Monkeys, saw her face. Now I'm a the hits go on and on. for $24.99. However, our generation is not available in any shops, but here are details of how you can get your copy. Simply call us now on these numbers. is not available in the shops. Catch up with what's happening on the winter sports scene each week on the Ford Ski Report. Every wintry Wednesday night, the Ford Ski Report is packed with the most comprehensive coverage of the World Cup ski scene. Interviews, reviews, previews and spectacular views.
The resort reports look behind the snow drifts to reveal the facts about the winter sport high spots, everything you need to know, and more. The snow reports take the temperature, measure the snow depths, study the state of the pistes at all the major resorts. The next Ford Ski Report, tonight at 9, HUK on Eurosport. Welcome back to Capo Orlando in Italy. The two boxers in their corner. What is an absorbing fight for the IBF Super Flyweight Championship. Robert Quiroga in the white trunks there, left of your picture, against challenger Vincenzo Belcastro. Belcastro who built up, I thought, a pretty sizable lead in the first half of the fight. Caroga, who's come back well from about the seventh round on. Just hints of a cut by that left eye of Belcastro. Belcastro throwing out his jab into the home stretch now. Caroga is a little bull of a super flyweight, really, isn't he? Looks very, very strong. No knockdowns. Oh, it's a good right from Caroga there. Two fighters now digging deep into their reserves of skill and courage and guts and commitment. And there's blood now coming from underneath the right eye of Belcastro. But an ugly looking gash. That won't worry him too much, though. The blood, of course, not running into the eye. This one could end up being very close indeed. Now, Castro is working quite well again in this round. He seems to have found a little bit of extra petrol throwing out a lot of shots and Kiroga not throwing too much back good rally this from the challenger and he's gone back to the well as they say and he's found that there's still a bit more water down at the bottom just when Kiroga seemed to be working his way back in methodically clawing his way back. Del Castro has started this round very, very well indeed. And less of his shots have missed in this round. He's working much better again. Much more accurate with them. Not wasting so many. And again, Kiroga walked onto the jab, come a hook there. Really prodigious work rate from the former undefeated European bantamweight champion Vincenzo Palcastro. And this round is more like those we saw in the first half of the fight. And Belcastro there threw up so much leather, so much leather, he must have taken that round and reversed the trend of the last three. Well, there's Vincenzo Belcastro, and, uh, well, commentators are paid to put their heads on the block sometimes. At this stage, I've got Belcastro leading the fight by three points. That's the way I see it anyway. I gave him about five of the first six rounds, then Kiroga the next three, but Belcastro is certainly that last one. Good left hook from uh, Kiroga in there. Crowd wondering what lies ahead in the last two chapters of this little novel. Round 11, two to go. Caroga, white trunks, Belcastro, blue. I think Caroga's cornermen 
must have said to him, you've got to keep on the pressure, you must win these last couple of rounds. Remember, he's fighting in Italy against an Italian as well. Which won't make it much easier. You never can tell how the judges are scoring this. It hasn't been the easiest fight to score, I must say. Perfectly possible that the judges could see things uh, quite differently. Scoring does tend to be a pretty subjective art. But again, Bal Castro there throwing in so much. He's quite prepared to miss with a few if he can land with two or three. Very, very grueling at this stage. Now Castro out of range with a few, and that blood coming from that right eye looks worse now underneath his face. Really looking quite a mess now, Bal Castro. But he's quite undeterred. I reckon he thinks that if he can just keep up the work rate in these last couple of rounds, he can take this title. And he's still outworking Kiroga in this round. Maybe the slightly better quality of shot coming from the champion. But for volume of punches, Al Castro, this is really some performance from him. It's the performance of his life, really, whatever happens. And as they say in the best cliches, that uh, blood on his face really is a kind of red mask of courage. That's a good left hook from Caroga, though. Now, Bo Castro there. He missed with the punch, but he didn't miss with the shoulder. <laughs> it really is very, very hard. Very hard and tough fight. But uh, a very good one, too. As Bo Castro goes back to his corner. Only three minutes more work remaining for him. And it'll be fascinating to know how the three judges are reading this on their scorecards so far. But uh, whatever way this goes, this has been an inspiring performance from Bel Castro. Look at that blood now seeping from that gash by the left eye as well. And it is not going to be a factor now. There is no question of a stoppage from cuts like that in boxing. Of course, when it gets dangerous is when the boxer can't see. There is a gash right on the eyelid there. There's a gash underneath the right eye. He's in a mess. But he'll think that it's all worth it if he walks out of here wearing the IBF Super Flyweight Championship belt. Is that going to happen? Last three minutes here in Capo Orlando. Kiroga has got to go for it. Again, that blood flowing thick and fast from underneath the right eye of Bel Castro. Kiroga coming forward still. Can the little Texan maybe find a knockout punch from in there somewhere? Watch use of the head, says the referee to Bel Castro in there. Look at the crowd complain about that. They're on their feet now at ringside here. They sense a shot. They sense that Bel Castro may be within sight of upsetting the young champion. Still, he comes forward. He walked onto a right there. He's got to be careful because he is pretty tired now. He's given so much, so much Bel Castro. And I've seen it with fighters before when they've really dug so deep. Suddenly, they run out of gas completely under pressure in the final round and just fall to pieces. And Bel Castro's got to be careful of that. But he still is throwing out those punches. And the crowd now are beginning to break into spontaneous applause at ringside in appreciation of the effort of Bel Castro. It's been some performance from him. Caroga 
working so hard himself trying to set up his own punches but they're looking a bit more tired now Abel Castro still comes forward he misses with a lot he gets picked off with two or three by Quiroga now that's another good left from Quiroga he is really producing the quality shots in this last round to be honest with you a little champion or a challenger has deserved to get a world title it's Belcastro tonight for my money still working away Quiroga throws out his jab but he can't just set himself for the big big shots he needs to try and put this challenger under pressure it's Belcastro who amazingly is going forward in this final round still He wants that title so very, very badly. And if he can stay on his feet in these last few seconds, and it is going to go to a points decision now. For my money, Belcastro did enough to take that title, and Quiroga gives him a little pat on the back at the end, almost as if to, well, not concede defeat. Maybe it was just a little mutual pat of appreciation. And Kiroga now is being lifted high by his corner. He's being whistled for that because this crowd believe that Bel Castro has done enough. And on my scorecard, I have Bel Castro as the new champion. But my scorecard doesn't matter one jot. Just to try and give you some indication at home. I don't know how you were scoring that if you were doing it along with us here. But uh, it's a fascinating fight to try and score. It's a difficult fight to score as well. Three judges from Great Britain, from Germany, and the United States. And it'll be fascinating to see how they have scored this. But uh, on the home territory, I must admit, I would be mildly surprised from what we have witnessed if Belcastro does not get this verdict. Courageous showing from him. Sensational amount of effort he put into that. Uh, not to mention skill and courage and a fair bit of resilience as well. Action from this furious final round. The uppercut there. Look at that blood all over the face of Belcastro. Walked onto the jab a bit that time. Still throwing out his punches. He's missing with a fair few. Scoring with a few as well. And again, Kiroga had a punch picking, scoring with the jab. And then the left of the body as well. Maybe Kiroga, I think, took that last round, although Belcastro did quite a lot of work in it. But I must say, I would give this to Belcastro by uh, a point or two. And uh, here we come. James Rayner, USA. 117-111-Kiroga. Well, that's amazing. Six points to Kiroga. 120-110-Kiroga. That is unbelievable. 114-115-Kiroga. Well, that's unbelievable. I cannot believe that scoring. That is just incredible. Kiroga has kept the title on a split decision. And one of the judges had him winning it by 10 points and another by six. That really is nothing short of a scandal. How can they score that fight like that after that? Incredible. And the British judge gave it to Bel Castro. There's bound to be a protest. And in very contentious circumstances, Karuga keeps the title from Capo Orlando.